Azaleic acid is the current it girl of skincare ingredients, and as you know, I am completely obsessed. But there are some caveats when it comes to using this ingredient in your skincare routine, especially at the beginning. So today's video is about the four pitfalls I've come across that I want you to avoid so you get the best possible results on your azelaic acid journey. Now make sure you stay right to the end because the most important one is coming last. Now azelaic acid has a lot in common with retinol when it comes to the best way to use it to achieve results. Sporadic use just won't cut it. Really azelaic acid is going to deliver the best possible outcome Come when you use it every single day consistently. This really is the key to getting the best possible skin with your active ingredient. So no dabbing it on blemishes or intermittently using it for block pores. It's a daily habit you want to build. Now irritation with any active can be an issue and azelaic acid is no exception. You don't want to dive in full throttle. However, it is perhaps a little more forgiving than your typical retinoid journey where going in full throttle at the beginning will tend to cause irritation like redness, dryness, and scaling. Azelaic acid is much more anti-inflammatory, so it's that little bit more forgiving, but you're still gonna to want to start out carefully. And for me, that means always doing half the dose every other day for at least two weeks. Now one thing that's worth noting is that azelaic acid can cause some stinging at the very beginning. Now this is completely normal and happens in almost everyone, but it can be alarming for those with sensitive skin where historically stinging is a sign that something doesn't agree with their complexion. What you'll find is that with persistent use that will become much less and actually usually correlates with better barrier function, so it's a good thing. Let's talk about purging. Now, any active ingredient that unclogs the pores, which means they're normalizing the keratinization process of sticky skin cells are no longer sticking to each other and therefore can exfoliate away cleanly. Now, when that starts to be corrected, because in acne and blemishes and congestion, we get this stickiness, azelaic acid stops that from happening, just like retinoids do. But the corrective process takes time and in the early stages you might well get a flurry of new blemishes in your blemish prone zones. Do not worry, this is akin to the ache in your calves two weeks into starting to practice for a marathon. Keep going is the mantra. If it really bothers you, drop the frequency down, go back to alternate days or even every third day application, but don't stop. Think about it as clearing out the blemishes of the next six months in six weeks. You are doing good work. The biggest mistake when it comes to active skincare is using too many actives together and in particular layering too many actives. Now, whilst with azelaic acid, it actually plays very well with many other ingredients. At the beginning, you're definitely going to want to use it in isolation in the evening and use other actives in the morning. You're not going to want to layer it with other things unless it's been consciously formulated with other active ingredients and then that's fine. Now, perhaps the most important ingredient to use it well clear of is benzoyl peroxide. Also tends to be used in acne management and the two layered together will cause a lot of irritation and potential redness and soreness. You don't want to do that. So if you're going to combine azelaic acid and benzoyl peroxide in a routine, do your azelaic acid at night and your benzoyl peroxide in the day. Now, the same thing is true of strong alpha hydroxy acids or AHAs. And given that there's definitely some overlap in terms of their benefits, my advice to you would be simply to park AHAs when you're starting out using azelaic acid. You can always add them in a bit later on when skin is tolerant. Then finally, physical exfoliants, I think really don't have a place in many routines, if I'm frank, but particularly when you're starting out with azelaic acid for congestion, breakouts, redness, or pigmentation. You'll get enough improvement in cell turnover, hi Hector, using azelaic acid by itself to just put them to the side. Ingredients that do pair well with azelaic acid include retinoids, beta hydroxy acid like salicylic acid, and also vitamin C or L-ascorbic acid. But again, at the beginning, split them out, use them at a different time of day, and don't layer your azelaic acid. 
<laughs> so for an uneventful azelaic acid, those are the four pitfalls I want you to avoid. Now tell me, have you made one of those mistakes already? If you have, let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to keep the azelaic acid content going and I look forward to seeing you again next week with more azelaic acid content. Bye for now.